It's the 25th of February 2019. I'm David Griffin. I'm here at Belper Meadows Cricket Club and I'm talking to John Smalley, John Holmes, Nick Smith. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining me. Um, I am reliably informed that you're the most venerable. You've got the, the longest kind of serving record of, uh, of the guys that are here this evening. Uh, I'd like to start, John, John Holmes, start with you first of all. Mm -hmm. What was your first association with this cricket club? Well, my first association really was, I lived locally and I used to come down and without being a member, I, when everybody else had cleared off, I'd play cricket or football on the ground. And what uh, year? What, what and year this would be in uh, 1948, 47, 48, that, right. that sort of time. And were you playing cricket at school as well? Uh, played, I played cricket at Strutt School, but it was only very amateurish cricket, you know, we hadn't got the uh, necessary equipment, the wickets were lousy. But down here, of course, it, it was have always been first class. So I came down here. A lot, a lot of my mates joined, and we all used to play cricket on the outfield. And eventually, uh, Harold Pepper, um, who was the uh, man round which this this club revolved for years and years yeah. and years, he took us under his wing, and we and we began to go in the nets. Uh, the official nets, and then eventually we started playing for the second team, and so it went on from there. Lovely. John, what was your Well, I came onto the scene much later than John, of course. Uh, John was first 11 captain for years, uh, and uh, I, I, I hadn't got his ability. I was keen, but I hadn't <laughs> got his ability. So I played a lot of the, t a lot of the time in the second 11, and, uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed the cricket down here. It was... Um, it's a superb venue, um, and um, it was worth coming, even if you didn't play well, to just savour the um, the atmospheres. And know, was club so cricket your introduction to cricket, or had you played no, at school I, I as well? I played at school, yes. Right, so yeah. this was at a time when all schools largely did play cricket, didn't they? Yes, it yeah. was, yeah. Although I, yeah. I must admit I didn't, I had about an eight year gap after leaving school before I right. joined the Meadows, yeah. Were you playing at school, John? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes, played a lot of cricket and... Um, and that was organised cricket, was it? It was organised cricket, cricket school, inter-school cricket, yeah. 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 But I think it's important to say that down here, this club revolved around this chap, Harold Pepper, who was a local businessman to begin with, um, and he was captain of the first team, he became chairman of the club, he became president of the club, but after he retired, he and his wife did the ground down here. He was in his 70s and 80s, and he really? still did the ground, and he made the wickets what they are. And his wife did the teas in the tea house, so the whole club revolved around Harold, and he died, I think, aged 102. Wow. Um, his mother died aged 103, and she still could recite the test team and the test match <laughs> scores at 103. So Remarkable. when did his involvement with the club start? Uh, Pepper, yeah, 1937, right, and it finished what so about what ten years ago when Harold died. So right. like yes, it was yeah. yeah, we'll come back to him, I'm sure. Nick, can we just establish when was your? Uh, I, I start? came down here about 1968 as a 15-year-old. Uh, I played uh, school cricket at uh, local school, Belper Parks, where I played yeah. cricket. Uh, in fact, Bob Winthrop, funnily enough, was a, a pre digit for one year while I was there, but that was rugby he was interested in. Uh, I came down here at 15 and played for the juniors. Um, a number of the guys who were here uh, later on, they, uh, they they joined slightly later, and mainly for the school, so a lot of the school kids came, we came down here. Was this the logical local club for you? Uh, well, it was, yes. I mean, I, I was interested in cricket, but... Um, I think I came down here probably through a guy called uh, Willis Beardmore. I lived near Willis, uh, and he knew I was interested in cricket, and he played down here with John. And I think the parents knew John Holmes as well, yeah. so um, this was the natural progression yeah. to come and play. Yeah. So I came down here and played as a 15-year-old uh, with the juniors, uh, probably till the age of about 17 or 18. And like everything else, you used to get swept into the, the teams through... Um, Shortages and the yeah. rest of it, yeah. Um, so my first game here was for, for the first team. Uh, just, you know, John was short one day. Must have been very short. <coughs> How did you get on? How did uh, you get on? Well, number 11, running around the boundary, chasing all the, all the old guys, you know. Mm. 
But uh, yeah, it was Alstree and uh, you know, when? we used to meet, uh, well I don't know when it was, 1968, 69 probably, 68. We used to meet at the Triangle which is just along the, the side yeah. there where you've come in the ground and uh, that was where we all met and uh, went down to Alstree because we all played local local cricket then, Camp uh, Central Derbyshire League. So what do we know of, of the club? I mean, I, I, I know you've got a book in front of you, haven't you, John, about the centenary, which was in 1990. So we know this club was founded in 1880, but I understand cricket was played in Belper before that. 1851, Belper Cricket Club was right. formed, and that uh, the Belper Cricket Club played on the piece of land over there, which is now was Thornton's factory, right. which is adjoining our present pitch, and they got kicked off that in. Um, 1879, and George Strutt, who's the big local yeah. mill owner and landowner, um, he this was his private ground. And so he then said, "Right, Belper Cricket Club, you'll become Belper Meadows Cricket Club, and I'll let you have the ground." Right. So it wasn't a case of getting rid of that club; it was just the, no, a new, newly. No, it, it, it just transferred after a year. There was an interregnum of a year, and then. Yeah. Then and what cricket stopped. were they playing? Because presumably there wasn't formalised cricket. It was very, very. It was very <coughs> much arranged matches. Yeah, there was no sort of uh, uh, league or anything of mm. that sort. No. But you managed to attract, and I'm mindful, gentlemen, that despite the fact you've mm. got lots of knowledge and you go back a long time, <laughs> you don't go back as far as Mr. Spofforth, for example. But but the demon Fred Spofforth did play for Belpro, I understand. Yes, he did. Yeah. Do we know how that came about? He was a great Australian, of course. Um, well, he came over here, and uh, I'm not sure whether he married a local girl or not, but, but he was over here, and he was here for a whole of a summer and a half, I think. And one of the team then, it wasn't Strutt, but somebody else, knew him quite well. And so he came here and he played for us on a sort of friendly basis and picked up a few wickets. <laughs> yes, sorry, yes. <laughs> well, and you also had Harold Rhodes, a yeah. generations yeah. later. Well, well, so well, well, he was well, two of the quickest well, bowlers ever to play cricket in Derby, uh, certainly. Yes, is. Yes. Did he bowl quick for, just, just digressing, did uh, Harold bowl quick? Harold, quickly Harold started play? bowling leg spinners, but he was taken off and <laughs> the, the captain, Harold Pepper, wouldn't bowl him when he bowled leg spinners. He said, you're useless. <laughs> and so Harold then took up fast bowling to get his own back, as it were. <laughs> well, so this so was did. before his Derbyshire days, presumably? No, it was, during his, it was when he was with Derbyshire. Derbyshire, Derbyshire wanted him to bowl <coughs> leg spinners. So he, he, was, he was bowling here on a weekly basis. But um, Harold didn't uh, agree with Derbyshire's assessment and needs. So, right. so Harold Pepper... Uh, in a way, transformed you into the quick bowler yeah. that you became. Yeah. Yeah. And when did cricket become, you said it was arranged cricket, so when did it become formalised? Do we know when Bell Prex the government... There was a Derbyshire League. League, there was a Derbyshire League, and the club was in the Derbyshire League for about five or six years, but then left the Derbyshire League, and it became friendly cricket, and it was friendly cricket from then until the Derbyshire Central League was formed in... 1970 was it? Something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, I yes. Yeah. And uh, we were one of the movers and shakers that formed it. And as, and but other than that, we played mainly in the Do Nottingham district, funnily enough. Nottingham amateurs and uh, and all the Radcliffe on Trent and so on yeah. and so forth. Yeah. What was the standard like when you? Because you were obviously you were a young man in the 60s when you started, but by the time cricket became formalised. What, what division were, were Belper Meadows well, in? What I think was in the, the central line? Derbyshire where we were playing when I joined, there were two divisions, I think. Right. Mm. Uh, yeah. We were, I think, always in the top division. <coughs> uh, and we won it on a number of occasions. Um, but uh, that was all the local, it was very local, that was. I think we went as far, we were probably the furthest north, were we? And then we went mm. Alstree, uh, Swarkston, Swarkston yeah. Hilton. Um, was good, uh, did you have, did you have natural, rivals natural rivals at that time? Was there a club that? Well, oh, Duffield were uh, natural right. rivals. Yeah, mm. natural rivals. Right. Yeah, they had uh, the, the Raleigh brothers. And well, was that friendly was, rivalry, or did it have? Uh, well, we knew we knew one or two of them anyway. So yes, I thought it was friendly rivalry in that respect. Um, as, as John mentioned, we, we were also played in the we went and joined the uh, Notts Alliance yep. cricket. Mm. We played Southall and Newark and people like that, and they were mm. you know, they were a step above what we were used to in fairness, but uh, I think one played on a Saturday and one played on a Sunday, so that was okay, and then one year they changed to both the Saturday, so we came out yeah. of the um, Knots and went yeah, to yeah. stayed in the Darkshire and yeah. remained there for the, the duration of that league survival. 
and I, I, I know you'll be relatively modest, I would expect you to be, but um, who were the star or the standout players during the times that you were playing here at Belfort Meadows? Well, well, when I started, the star <coughs> player uh, was Harold Pepper and a guy called Ray Hurd who played in the Yorkshire Council and he came down here as manager of the mill and he was the guy. Um, the only thing I'd say about Ray was that he was also a very good mathematician because on the fifth or sixth <coughs> ball of every over, he was, had a one down to fine leg or third man. And, and literally, on, we played Heena and we got Heena out for 54. I opened the batting with him. I got two runs. There were two buys and he got his 50. <laughs> I think you've been a few yeah. bats like some, that. Some others learned yeah, yeah. 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 well. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. He was my mentor, of course. He <laughs> was a Yorkshireman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you, you, I understand, John, you played some second eleven cricket for Derbyshire. My first, well, my first match for Derbyshire's second team was down here against Warwickshire. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a time when they didn't have professional umpires. Tiger Smith umpired for Warwickshire. Dennis Smith mm -hmm. umpired for Derbyshire. And if you remember, Barry... Uh, Tiger Smith won by 11 LBWs to 10. He was the oldest living uh, Test cricketer at one point, I think, in the well, late Tiger. 70s. Yeah, in yeah, 91, yeah. I saw him yeah. at Edgbaston and he was, yes, he was, he was described as the oldest living Test cricketer. Uh, uh, you, you'd only got to hit your pads and out on that. Wasn't so, it? how did you get yeah. picked? What was the. Because it's a different. I mean, today you have academies and you have age group yeah. cricket yeah. and all this kind of thing. How did you get. Selected. What was the process to get? Picked well, for the I, I played for club and ground a bit, and, and they, they had a lot of club and ground matches. And who was around then? Who were you playing alongside? Um, yeah. Scully, Alan Rebel, Reg Carter, Keith Moen, yeah, um, Harold Rhodes, of course. Um, Brian Jackson played. Good players, though. Yeah, yeah. So there were one or two decent players around. Um, yeah. Uh, you've you've said that you weren't as good as your your no. colleague, but you <coughs> sure you had your own triumphs and 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 what's what were you playing first team cricket? No, second, second I, team I played. Cricket? I did play some first team cricket, yeah. but mainly averaging out on more second team cricket. Yeah, yeah. And batsman or bowler? Batsman. So don't be shy. Tell us you tell us your happiest days, most successful days on the field. Uh, well, in the second eleven. Uh, I've got one or two of my ex-colleagues here. Was, oh, we, we did have a good second eleven, didn't we? Yeah, uh, good job, yeah. Good, and we, uh, we enjoyed our cricket. We, um, we for an, uh, quite a stream of years, we were either we either won the league or yeah. uh, or were runners up, yeah. weren't we? Yeah. So, uh, but the main thing was we enjoyed it, and we brought quite a lot of younger players on, mm. didn't we? Who yeah. who did well for mm. the uh, <coughs> club later on. Mm. And, and what uh, about that Derbyshire connection? It's a question to all of you, really. Did, have you had Derbyshire players playing here? Have you had young Derbyshire players that have, that have started here and that have, have moved on over the last three, four, five decades? Yeah, we've, we've had quite a number of Derbyshire players playing. It. I can remember Michael Allen, left arm, yes. left arm slow bowling. <coughs> Michael played for us for a season or two before he went up to uh, Northumberland or somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, Probably had more footballers, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which footballers? Uh, with Leighton James, didn't we? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alan Durbin. Really? Um, Brian Clough was a member. Kevin of Hector. Time. Kevin Hector. Brian Clough. Did you get Cloughy on the field? Well, Cloughy Cluffy yeah. played played here until, and I was captain, and he was he was no problem at all. He really wasn't. He, he didn't cause any problem until one Thursday he rang me up and he said, "John, he said, I'm sorry, I've got to go to a funeral on." Saturday I can't play. So I said, OK, Brian, that's that. On the Monday morning, Jack Kirkland said, oh, he said, I went to Doncaster Races with Cluffy on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so I rang up Brian and said, Brian, what would you do if one of your players did that to you? He said, I'll never play you again. <laughs> so I said, well, that's it. And that, that, that so you was, sacked that, Brian Clough. That, that was it, but... Uh, but we, we were good friends ever <laughs> afterwards. But, but, but he wasn't a problem at all. He wasn't the cluff that you saw on yeah. television or anything. He, he, was, he was as good as gold yeah. in the cricket team. But, uh, and that was the end of his oh, And what about professionals? Because you talked about Rhodes. So when Rhodes played, did he play as a, as a pro? Or no. What, what was the arrangement? We, we, didn't, we never had professionals here until we had a, 
we used to have a few pros about ten years ago, didn't we? Mm -hmm. But yeah. this was always an amateur club. We never never paid anybody yeah. at all, not even boot money or anything. And um, so, uh, no, it was always amateur. And triumphs down the years, because I know that the, you, you've won you've won the league in mm. yeah, the years. We, we won the Central Derby. <coughs> <league. I don't coughs> what was that, Nick? Uh, I can't remember the dates, but uh, we won quite a few on quite a few occasions. First time, eighty-four. Uh, eighty-four was that the second of it, and the first of them. Uh, first, yeah. yeah. So I mean, both teams were, were successful in their yeah. their leagues. So both club, both teams played um, league cricket. Yes. And Sunday was uh, the friendly cricket, and we played the grasshoppers. And a lot of Nottingham teams used to come yeah. over here because you know the, the ground is you know pretty good by yeah. by club standards that we've got here. Um, so, you know, those were the teams that we sort of played. Yeah. Um, but, um, and what about second Derbyshire second eleven cricket? Because I know a lot of second eleven cricket has been played over the years down here. How did that come about? Well, well, it came about simply, be, simply because we've got such a good ground and the wicket's always been pretty good. And, um, and they were looking to come away from the county ground and not use Chesterfield so much, so... Uh, that's how they came here, and that Warwickshire game was the the first game that was mm. played, the second mm. team game that was played down here. It's been pretty regular ever since, hasn't it, Jeff? Mm. You've you had quite a few second team games down here. Well, 22 years I've been down these grounds, but they've been about every year. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. so so it's a regular venue now yeah. for them. Yeah. 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 And just to, just to conclude this first interview, where where are you? I presume you've all retired from playing the game. Or? <laughs> don't want to be rude because you'd be amazed yes. how many people say to me still going in the on, 70s, yeah. oh, I'm still playing. So I presume you've all finished playing, is that right? Yes. So what are your, what's your involvement now with, with Belper Meadows? Very little, actually, to, to be honest. You know, it, the club has changed a lot, obviously, um, and particularly in these last few years um, with the building project. Uh, but now you just move on and find something else to do, don't you? I've, I've just retired as president of the sports club, right? Which incorporates hockey, tennis, bowls, and cricket, and uh, so I've just retired from there. Still watch a bit on a Saturday and Sunday. Uh, well, I, c I come down occasionally, but I can always uh, talk a good game. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> nobody can remember how I played. Anyway, <laughs> That's so. the privilege. As you get older, you can talk yeah. talk yeah. as good a game as you want. Yeah. Yeah. Nick. Uh, not particularly involved nowadays. Uh, we stayed on a little bit and was on various committees later on, but uh, latterly mm. not. Come and watch occasionally and so come down to the ground yeah. uh, when the centre them are down here and down for seconds and mm. that sort of stuff. And uh, uh, one or two of my ex playing people still still involved, so I see them. Excellent. Well, that's a brilliant start, mm. gentlemen. Mm. Thank you very much.